kind of thing. So when we teach separations, we talk about the chemical potential, the differences in chemical potential between one phase and the other, right? Because you're going between two phases in separation. So that's chemical potential. Um, now, for this to work right, temperature or pressure and the number of moles of everything else um, can't change. So, what I want to know is how much energy do I change when I put a molecule in or when I take a molecule out of the solution. But I can't change anything else. Can't change the number of moles of everything else in the solution. I can't change the temperature. I can't change the pressure. Um, it's a Okay, so we need that definition. And I'm sorry that we don't all have that in the brain. But in series, like, um, we're going to move on to electric chemical potential. you think might be different between separations, like our stuff going between one phase and another phase, and electric chemistry? Whether or not our thing is in between two different charges, or two different, like if it was going to go between two different phases. There's something a little different between like LC. potential, but not charged species moving around. So that's the big difference between chemical potential and life chemical potential. Um, although, you missed my wonderful. So I like chemical potential, they just use a bar. It's not going to look much different. And then it's going to be the change in the electrochemical free energy. So now, this is electrochemical free energy rather than just free energy. Um, and again, this takes cap. Right here, these little large scale um, electrical environment. So I'm going to take into account the fact that you would apply a potential to take into account the fact that things are charged around um, in a charge species. So, again, temperature, pressure, number of moles of genetic all have to be constant um, in order for this to work. Now, I mentioned this because what, when I first arrived here, we had these meetings about like, the curriculum and nothing really ever came of it because we didn't have enough professors to teach around the curriculum. But I was talking about, you know, a standard analytical curriculum, quite frankly, um, at a lot of places would have a class in separations and then they have a class in like chemistry. And a person who was in this meeting who, you know, again, skews PCAM in this department says, I don't know why you would need two different classes for those. He's like, because they're all the same thing. They're all just based on chemical potential. Right? So, of course, that means he would teach this all from a very theoretical point of view. He says, well, if you understand chemical potential, then you obviously understand electrical potential, then you only really need one class to cover their separations and electric chemistry. Well, obviously, from a practical standpoint, I don't agree with it at all. Um, you know, the separation of electric chemistry, when I teach analytical, don't, the lessons don't end up looking like each other at all. Um, you know, and we don't always start from, although if I did teach practical level separations, I would be chemical potential in dread. Um, but I don't tend to talk about it, you know, in three days worth of electric chemistry. Um, but again, but this, this is the key chemistry work, but they're all based on the same thing. You know, and so that you should be able to go back and forth. You know? <clears throat> All right, so you can actually convert from electrochemical potential to chemical potential. Um, and it's this equation. So, electrochemical potential, again, of molecule I is alpha, um, is equal to mu spa times Z times um, So again, this is just the chemical potential. This is the electric chemical potential. 
And so Z, here's charge. F, we know the modulus of gravity is constant. And then they're going to use I here, just for the weird. That tells you about the potential of that. <coughs> So this is where potential comes in. And it's like a potential, so it accounts for charge and potential. And so it adds another term, basically a chemical potential. <clears throat> but you can get back and forth between them. And thus, you can basically use them in the same equations um, uh, as you can believe or not. OK, not hopefully a hard question. What is uh, um, like a potential of a neutral molecule? Can interpret an equation. I should figure the new thing. So what's this? It's the chemical potential, right? Because Z is zero, then it's just the chemical potential. All right, good. All right, so again, if it's not charged, um, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, again, we can write. Right, um, a standard state um, equation. So just like we did, is a sort of so you can write a standard state equation, chemical potential, just like you could for delta G. Right, so it's a standard state plus R T times the natural log of the activity of R. Oh, well, just like we wrote equations for delta G, I'm going to show you, you can write these same things for chemical potential. For reason, only undergrad chem classes pass chemical potential. And yet, as I said, when we get to applied thermodynamics, it seems like it's often used instead of delta G um, uh, uh, in a lot of things. Um, right, so everything is at unit activity. Right, then it's the same thing as delta G. Right, then this is the um, that. And so here's where the separation of our part comes in. If we have an equilibrium between two phases, alpha and beta, then that means that the chemical potentials um, are equal to each other. So the electric chemical potential of I is, is alpha the electric chemical potential of I is beta. Um, and as you go along. All right. So if you were looking at like a reaction. Um, as far as that goes. 
Okay, so that's thermodynamics, and I'm going to do a thermodynamics. Good thing that I'm going to break the rest of my voice. We have two pages left. Don't ask me why this chapter ends on ions and electrodes, and I do want to cover that. Um, so we'll, we'll do that, but it's not heavy.